Well, hello there, ladies and gents. I'm Tammy Sipniewski. Thank you so much for popping by my channel. In this video, we're going to take a look at two new products from Mayono, a dynamic microphone, the HD300T, and the Mayono Caster. Now, here's the thing. The Mayono Caster, that's not a new product, but they have made a couple of updates to it. But being that the microphone is the newest thing, let's get to that one first. It's very reminiscent of the Samson Q2U, except for I think it's sexier, it's sleeker, and it's cheaper. Now the build quality on this is really good. It's an all metal body, metal mesh grill, and it feels really well put together. In the package, they're going to supply you with a shock mount, a pop filter, a desk stand, and the cables that you need. It comes with an XLR cable. It also comes with a USB-C to USB. So if you want to run this into either a laptop a desktop, an iPad, as long as you have a USB dongle for your iPad, this microphone is going to work for you. On the bottom of the microphone is where you're going to plug in the cables, and it also has a headphone jack, so if you wanted to monitor the audio directly out of the microphone, you could. On the top of the microphone, there's going to be an on-off switch, and there's also going to be a big plus and minus button. And you're looking at that, you're like, hmm, this must, you know, control the gain of the microphone, but it doesn't. It controls the volume of whatever device that you have it plugged into. The microphone stand that it comes with is a desk stand. I'm not using that desk stand right now just because it's not conducive to this setup. So I have it on an Amazon Basics microphone stand. With this stand, it's just easier to get it directly in front of your face. So if you're someone that's a gamer, because I know you gamers have those awesome looking seats that look like their seats plucked out of a fancy race car, this would be great for a setup like that. Now let me shut up so that we can do a self noise test. Now, unfortunately, I do have tinnitus, but the only thing that I can audibly hear in the room is the fan that's in my laptop. And it's on, so you might be able to hear it. Let's do a plosive test. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peanuts. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peanuts. Now, dynamic microphones are really great at cutting out background noises. So if you're looking to use a microphone, but you're in an area that's kind of noisy, whether that's living on a busy street or you're living in a hectic household, a dynamic microphone would be a really good solution for you. This, I think, is a great looking microphone. So not only does it look good, but it sounds really good. And if you're live streaming or doing YouTube videos, anything where someone can see you, that's important. But most importantly is going to be the sound. And I really like the way that the audio shines through on this microphone. The presence of the microphone is really good and it just has a very smooth sound to it. In case I didn't mention it, earlier. Mayono did send me these products to check out, but they didn't write a script. I don't have to say anything nice about it. They just wanted me to review them and make a video on them. And now to the star of the show, the Mayono Caster. So as I said before, this is not a new product, but they have listened to what everyone has seemed to be asking for. And it seemed like the main complaint about the Mayono Caster was the fact that it came pre-programmed with sound effects on the sound pads on the side. They cleared out all of the sound pads. So now now you have the ability to input several different sound effects. The only one that's pre-programmed is all the way on the lower right hand side is going to be this. That's of course is a, a censoring thing. You feel like a swear word is coming up or someone starts talking about Q or flat earth. You can just in your package, they're also going to send you a couple of these cards. This way, in case you can't remember what the sound effects are, you can just quickly use that as a little reference to see, okay, all right, here's, here's where the applause are. I mean, what's really great about this is that it's only 200 bucks. This is very similar to the Rodecaster, to the Zoom, the Go XLR, a lot of products out there, very similar, but cost like quadruple the amount. Now, I always get hit with what, what is the main thing about that? interface why is it so much less expensive like it's got to be missing a lot of components what's going on there it's got to be missing something and the answer is it's not missing a lot of things it's just missing one thing and that one thing is the ability to record directly into the Mayono caster there's nowhere to put an SD card you need to record into a device and that's the only difference really everything else that those other devices have this has as well.
Now, when you purchase the Mayono caster, there is some software that is on the Mayono website that you can download. Previously, this was only available for Windows devices. However, they've made a few upgrades and it's now available to use on Mac OS as well. Having that companion software uh, is going to enable you to record a lot more sound effects as long as you're willing to use the companion software. It's not going to be directly on the Mayono caster, but it's going to be on your computer or your desktop. This software is not for iOS, so you wouldn't be able to use this with the, an iPad. Now, the sounds that you've inputted into the Mayono caster, they are going to be recognized on your companion software, and it's going to be the illumination color of the keys. You know, I know in the picture, it looks like it's all lit up. It's nice and pretty and beautiful. Beautiful, but those keys don't stay illuminated. They're only illuminated when you're hitting them. Now, when I recorded the outro here, it was over 20 seconds and I didn't get any error message. So it leads me to believe that the companion software, if you're using it and you have a great big long intro or outro that's over 40 seconds, it can handle that. It, however, cannot input that sound effect that's over 20 seconds directly onto the Mayono caster. Okay, now let's go over the body of the Mayono caster. On the front of the device, there's two 3.5 headphone jacks. On the back of the device, there's two XLR ports. You can input microphones or you could input music Musical instrument. After the XLR ports, there's nothing but 3.5 jacks. It's going to be your phone input, outputs to speakers, outputs to devices. They give you all of the cables that you need. Let's try to do a mix minus. Let's call my buddy Anthony. Hey, Tammy. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, because I'm on the Mayono caster right now, and we're doing a mix minus. Oh, okay. Why don't you go ahead and plug your channel, brother? <laughs> Bad Karma 714. All right, you too. All right, bye. Bye. They also have another 3.5 jack back there in case you want to use another microphone. It can't be an XLR microphone that requires phantom power, but you can use, like, let's say, a lavalier microphone running into there. There's also two outputs. So if you wanted to live stream to two different devices at the same time, like Facebook and YouTube, there's also a port for a speaker. So if you wanted to monitor on a speaker or if you're doing some karaoke, and on the back is the USB-C port. This is where you're going to plug in the USB-C cable to USB, and that is going to run into a device. And it's also what you're going to use to charge the Mayono caster. It has a rechargeable 5,000 milliamp battery. That is going to last you about 10 hours. And of course, the XLR ports. Here's what I really like about them. They have individualized 48 volts of phantom power. My Behringer audio mixer doesn't have that. There's also a gain knob for each one of the XLR ports. There's also a mute button. So let's listen to see if it's an audible mute button. On right now, did you hear the mute button? Probably not. Sometimes you hit mute buttons and it makes an audible clicking sound. On the lower left-hand side of the device is going to be the sliders that controls the volume of each one of the microphones. When I'm not using one of the channels of the microphones, I always have the gain turned all the way down and the sliders pulled all the way down as well. The knob right next to this one controls the volume of whatever devices that you're inputting. Just demonstrated the mix minus. I could have increased the volume of that phone call with this knob and a mute button for that as well. Same thing with the knob right next to it. And the big round button in the middle with the big Mayono M on it is just basically going to control the volume that you're outputting to whatever device you're recording into. It's the, it's the master volume for everything. The monitor knob, that's going to control the volume of the headphones. Right next to that is the pitch knob, and that controls the pitch of your audio. So let's say if I wanted to turn the pitch up, it's going to make me sound like a, a chipmunk. If I wanted to turn it down, it's going to make me sound like a man. Or if I wanted to turn it lower, I'm going to sound like a demon. Something that would be used probably by gamers or people who do pranks, that, that would be cool for them. On the upper right-hand corner, when you hit the button of Auto-Tune, and of course, when you're using Auto-Tune, you can go into all the different major chords that they have here. So we'll start with um, uh, A. 
This is auto tune. This is my voice in auto tune. Can you hear the difference? We're in auto tune. This is my voice in auto tune. And that goes through all the different chords. And you would be surprised how many people are interested in that auto tune and said to me, I wish you would have demonstrated the auto tune with singing because I want something like that and I wanted to hear it. And right below it is mode. Now, what the modes are going to do, it's going to, like, emulate the sound as if you were in that particular area. So right now, this is studio. The next one is KTV. I don't know what that is. This one is the church. This one is a hall. This one is a valley. And this one is a room. And, of course, we have built-in sound effects. So we'll go through these again. This is a female. This is a male. A baby. And this... Sh this is a robot, which... It doesn't really sound like a robot to me. It's what, um... Like if you were being threatened by a demon. Jimmy, I'm hiding beneath your bed. I've always been there. Always. And to just leave, you would just hit that button again and it would come out of that effect. But I have to admit, like that... I'm a little scared now. And sidechain. What sidechain is going to do, if you're playing a sound effect or your outro or something, it should decay the sound of the music so that your voice is going to be the more prominent audio. So where is my outro? Intro, here we go. And this is my intro, and it should decay the sound of the music a little bit so that when I'm talking, it's mainly my voice and not the intro so much. I mean, of course you're going to be able to hear the intro, but my voice is going to be the prominent audio here. And as I'd mentioned before, you can input all the sound effects that you want into these open seven pads. When you go to Mayono to get that companion program, they do have the preloaded sound effects there if you want to input those and it's the ones where the, like the kids are cheering and there's applause well I did put applause in here <laughs> <laughs> laughter I put the laughter in there and what is this oh a record scratch like you said what <laughs> for somebody that I shall not name <laughs> toilet here's another one Slap. By the way, I can't believe I almost forgot this. This also comes with a denoiser. So right now, this whole entire time that I've been using the Miono caster, it has not been on. Let me go ahead and put it on in three, two, one. This is the audio that you can expect when that denoiser is on. So it's basically a noise gate. Whenever your voice stops, it slams that gate shut. This would be good if you're using, let, let, let me do, let me do this. I don't know if you can hear that music playing and see how it kind of just shuts off when I, I stop talking like it just slams that gate shut and you can't hear it at all. I'm not a fan of it because sometimes I feel like it muffles the audio just a little bit. It seems like it can cut off the very beginning or the very end of your words. So if you're in a situation where you don't need the denoiser, I wouldn't use it. I just think that the audio is way better with that denoiser completely off. So right now, let's do a comparison of the ambient sounds with the denoiser off. Ambient sounds with the denoiser on in three, two, one. Now the denoiser is off again. The combination of a dynamic microphone with that denoiser is phenomenal. Okay, I just plugged in the Rode Pod mic because I know what's going to happen. It's right here and people are going to wonder if there's enough juice in the Mayono caster to power the Rode Pod mic. This is the audio that you can expect to hear with the Rode Pod mic. And this is with the denoiser on. So right now I have the Fed head in with 48 volts of phantom power engaged. I'm going to remove all of this. And then we're going to hear the raw sound of the audio. And this is the audio from the Rode pod mic. This is without the Fed head and uh, no 48 volts of phantom power engaged. And the denoiser is off. Let's go ahead and turn the denoiser on.
This is with the denoiser on. This is the audio that you would expect to hear if you're using the Rode pod mic. Oh, and by the way, the gain is completely maxed out. Okay, so from where I'm sitting, what are the upsides and what are the downsides? Upsides are it makes your workflow so much easier. Oh my goodness, having everything right there at your fingertips, controlling your microphone gain, the volume of your headphones, if you want to do sound effects, funny voices. A lot of girls are interested in that auto-tune singing thing. You cannot beat that price for 200 bucks. It's a great price. Is there anything that... Um, I find at fault with it, or is there anything wrong with it? And you guys know I'm always very honest with you when it comes to shortcomings of devices. I don't like to say this because this might just be my unit, but there's a little bit of a disconnect with the audio into the monitoring. So when I'm speaking, there's a little bit of a delay. I can hear an echo in my headphones, but it's not in the audio. So there's definitely something going on here. Now, what makes me think that it it could just be a problem with my particular unit? It's very strange. It starts to correct itself. So as I'm speaking, the audio becomes more and more in sync until it's completely in sync. And then it'll stay completely in sync for a while. And then like 30 seconds down the line, the audio is about to come out of sync again. And that there's going to be that hesitation, that echo in my headphones again. Romeono, a dynamic microphone. Romeono, Romeono, Romeono. And until next time, wear your sunblock and call your mom and dad just to say how much you love them.